Hi, I'm George Thomas with AmateurLogic.tv and Ham Nation, and today I'm going to be taking a look at the ICOM's IC9100. ICOM calls this the all-around transceiver. It supports HF, VHF, UHF, there's optional D-Star, GPS, and satellite and EME work as well can be done with this rig. This radio covers most ham bands and modes and provides a wide variety of operating styles for working uh, DX QSOs, RIDI, uh, D-Star, DV mode, satellite, or even moon bounce, the IC9100 has you covered. It's a multi-band, multi-mode radio. It covers HF and 50 MHz, 144, 430, and 440 amateur bands in multiple modes, and there's an optional 1200 MHz band unit as well. The IC9100 has two independent receivers and can receive two bands simultaneously. Each receiver has its own volume and squelch controls. There's an optional UT121 D-Star module that provides D-Star on VHF, UHF, and the 1200 MHz band, but it also can be used on HF as well. There's plenty of CW functions in this receiver. It's got four channels of keyer memory, each with 70 characters, and there's a multifunction electronic keyer and adjustable keying speeds and that makes it great for using with a bug keyer and in full break-in mode. So let's do a rundown on some of these buttons here and what they do. Of course, the power button is self-explanatory. The transmit button is the same as pushing the push-to-talk button on your microphone. It just puts the transceiver into transmit mode. This unit has a built-in auto tuner. All you need to do is just hold down the tuner button for a moment and you'll see it tune right there. And that gives you the lowest SWR without need for an external antenna tuner. Now below that, we've got the uh, antenna and meter switch here. This selects which antenna we're currently on. There's two antenna jacks in the rear of this for HF and six meters. And by pushing that button, we can select antenna one or antenna two. And we can see that it's tuned right now on antenna one where we tuned it a moment ago. Right beside that is the noise reduction and the notch filter buttons. This engages those functions. Now, the noise reduction is DSP-based noise reduction. It's 32-bit DSPs in this rig, so it really has a good DSP noise reduction. Let's just play with that a little bit. So here's the net going on right now. We can hear the signals in there. They're not super strong. We also hear a lot of noise in there. Let's engage the DSP noise reduction took some of the noise down. Now, we've got an adjustment we can make here that will change the amount of DSP noise reduction. It shows us right here on the bottom. We can turn it on up to where it really brings the noise down. Usually a, a middle setting on that's pretty good, but it just depends on what type of noise you got. Now, the notch filter is actually uh, several different notch filters in one. There's an automatic notch filter, which is on right now. And what that will do is try to find any beat frequencies that are present and notch that out. But sometimes you want to manually handle that on your own. To do that, press it again and it goes to manual notch filter. Now we can use this knob to adjust where the notch is sitting at. For CW operation, we'd only use a manual notch filter because an automatic notch would remove the signal we were trying to copy. So you hear that tone in there now? We can adjust the notch and take it out. But there's several different widths to this manual notch filter. Holding the button here, and we change between narrow wide and mid. We can still hear that tone in there on narrow. On wide though it's pretty much gone. Now another good thing about this notch filter is it's a little different than on a lot of rigs. This is like on the higher end ICOM rigs. That notch actually is in the AGC loop management of this radio. So when you notch out an offending signal, you're only taking out that signal. So the receiver does not see that anymore. 
and it allows the AGC to come on up to where you can hear that weak signal, where in a lot of radios, you just hit the notch and it just puts a notch right there on that. But the AGC in the radio is still turning down the overall gain. By using the manual notch here, we get away from that problem. We only notch out the little piece of spectrum we want and everything on both sides is still up at the normal AGC level. Of course, we've got volume control and our RF gain, or it can be used as a squelch as well. Turn it right, you've got a squelch. Turn it left, your RF gain. Same thing for the sub band here. And you can see we got both bands showing now. On the top band here, the main band, we're on 40 meters. On the bottom band, we're on the VHF 2 meter band. Now we've got a separate volume here and a separate squelch for that. Now you can have two speakers plugged to this rig and one band will come out of one, the other one will come out of the other speaker, or you can have them both just come out of a single speaker if you like. Now of course there's headphone jack on here and there's an electronic key or input for your CW key and the old Foster microphone connector. If we move over here to the display, there's a lot of information to be seen there. We can tell right now we're in lower sideband mode. Here's our frequency display. There's our S meter, and right below it, it says PO. That means power out. So when we key this rig, this meter will then be showing us our output power. We can see the AGC is set to slow. Now there's three different AGC speeds on this rig. And we can see that our filters are set to one. There's also three different filter widths in here. And we've got the manual notch filter on, we've got the noise blanker on, and we've got noise reduction on. We're on the call channel. We're on antenna one, and the tuner is engaged. And then on the subband, you can see we're on 145.450 FM mode. We're also on fast AGC here, and the filter is to one. We're on VFOA. And we're on the memory channel one, but that one is blank. Now down at the bottom here is the menu structure for the rig. And this will change depending on which mode you're on or which band. Now we've got a menu button right here. We're currently on menu one and we're on the main band. So we can press this one and we've got control of the AGC speed. You see it switches between fast, medium, and slow. So you can choose your best speed there. I like slow myself, but sometimes you have to turn it up faster in noisy conditions and when there's weak signals. Uh, F2 button in this mode is duplex. F3 is the compressor, and we can turn the mic compressor on and off with it. Transmit bandwidth is on S4, and that allows us to set how wide of transmit bandwidth we're broadcasting with. Now there are three presets there, and those can be adjusted in more detail in the menus. And over here is our spectrum scan, and it just did a quick sweep. It's five kilohertz wide there, and we can see everywhere there's somebody talking. So we'll just press that button again, and it'll do another sweep of it. Or we can hold the button down, and it'll sit here and continuously sweep, and we can see where people are located. We can change the width of that spread right here by hitting the step button. Now if we hit the menu button again, now we're on menu two, F1 is scan, F2 is your memory channel selection, F3 will do an SWR sweep, and this allows you to go through different frequencies throughout a band, and it'll key the rig and take an SWR reading there, so you can look at a sweep of your antenna and see where it's most resonant. TCON is your tone control. You press that and you can go in, and we've got several menu settings here for the high pass filter and the low pass filters on the receive. Uh, we can adjust the amount of bass or treble here on each band. And uh, transmit bandwidth here, if you remember we said we had three different ones. Here we can adjust how wide each one is and what frequencies they roll off. Uh, a lot of settings in here to do with the tone filtering on the rig and the bandwidth. And VSC is voice squelch control. For those who scan HF frequencies, there's times that the tuner uppers will whistle or put a tone out on the air, and rather than stopping and hearing the tone, the VFC will pause, 
identify it as a tone and skip over that frequency and it works on both memory and VFO scan modes. So the menu button here just toggles between menu 1 and menu 2. If we hold it in we get another set of menus here. Uh, this allows us to adjust things like the uh, contrast of the LCD display, the backlight, the level of the beep. This is where the majority of your menu settings are. So the menu button changes between the two main menu modes or we hold it down and we get into the large menu. Beside that we got our mode selections here. We can select single sideband, CW or RIDI. Pressing it once goes to RIDI. Pressing it again takes us to CW. We'll go back to sideband. We can select between AM and FM here. And we've got DVDR mode. Now what this is, this is for D-Star. You can add an optional D-Star board to this radio and then all of a sudden you've got D-Star capability on all the bands, not just VHF and UHF, but on HF as well. Next to that we've got our filter selection here, so we can select between the three different widths of received bandwidth here. We've got one, two, and three, and it's showing us down here what the width of each is. Now if we want to adjust one of those, we just hold the button down and it brings up a little display here where we can set the width of it. Let's go on up to another filter. Let's go to filter 1. We can see it's currently set for 3 kilohertz wide. We can hold down the BW button and then we can turn our VFO knob and that will adjust how wide our receive bandwidth is. We can go out as wide as 3.6 here if we want to. Below that we've got some little controls here for the mic gain, for the RF power, for the CW pitch and CW speed. And then some more buttons here. This is the preamp button. We can turn the receive preamp to level 1, level 2 for a little more gain, or turn it off completely. If we hold in this button, it becomes the attenuator in that case. Now to turn the noise blinker on and off, we've got a button right here that does the noise blinker function. If we hold it in, we're allowed to actually go and set the noise blinker level as well as the depth and the width. So it gives us a little more control over what type of noises the noise blinker will help. Then we've got the Vox and break-in buttons here to access those features. And then the monitor allows us to hear ourselves in a set of headphones while we're talking. And here's the uh, call and GPS button that selects between call channel and also enables the GPS function if you have an external GPS hooked to this unit. Now up here we've got a satellite button and I'm not a satellite expert but I think this radio's got a lot of features for that in it. We hit that button and it puts us in normal satellite mode here. We're showing the VHF and UHF bands and there's a lot of things that we can do in here that are beyond my knowledge. Uh, I know we can set uh, Doppler shifts the main and sub switch here allows us to select the main or sub band. It swaps the two for us. The sub switch puts a little icon right here that says sub and now any of the settings we do on the rig occur down here on the sub band instead of on the main band. The split button allows for split transmit receive operation where you're using two different frequencies. The AB switch allows you to select between the A or B VFO and the XFC switch allows you to listen to the transmit frequency that you selected on a split. Over here on the numeric keypad there are more functions. Just by selecting one of the buttons it takes you to a different band. And ICOM gives you triple band stacking registers as well and this means that the radio remembers the last three frequencies used in each band and it's great to quickly move around in a band and it's uh, helpful in some contests. There are other functions on here as well. Uh, for frequency input, uh, a number of other functions, memory read and write, tuning step, and you see that puts a little arrow right there above the 6. This means when we tune, we're tuning in bigger increments than if that is not there, then we're tuning down here at a higher resolution. So that allows you to get from one end of the band quickly. Now over here is something that's very important. This is twin passband tuning. 
you can adjust either side of the receive filter's bandwidth. Somebody kind of chirping in right on the side. By adjusting the twin pass band tuning here, we can take out those offending signals. Leaving just the signal we're trying to listen to. To clear the twin pass band tuning, we just hold the button here, sets it back to normal. Now you hear all that squeaking again. The subdial ring here adjusts the frequency in one kilohertz increments on the rig. That allows us to tune quicker. But if you hit the subdial button, then it activates the subdial icon down here so that when we turn that knob, we're changing the frequency down here on the subband. Now, the memory channel selector is right here, and that allows you to switch through the different memory channels you've got programmed into the rig. I don't have any programmed in there currently. And below that, we've got the RIP for receive increment tuning. That allows you to tune slightly off the frequency when you're trying to receive a station that's not right where they should be. And you can set up the RIT for a push and hold clear, or if you're a contester, you might like to set it up for a momentary push to clear. Now the same thing with the uh, Delta TX button here. That allows you to do the same thing when you transmit to change the frequency, or you can just hit the clear button and it will clear out wherever you had previously set that. And there's one more button down here, and this is the speech button. If you press it, S97.2244 megahertz LSB. It reads out the mode and the frequency to you. If you hold that button in, it puts the rig in lock mode so that you can't accidentally bump the VFO or the buttons here and change your rig settings. Holding it again unlocks it. Now let's take a look at the back of this rig to see what we've got there. Of course, we've got our ground connector here for our ground system. And we've got two antenna inputs here for the HF section. We've antenna one and antenna two. Those are selectable from the front panel. Above that, we've got a jack here for an optional external antenna tuner. Even though this comes with a built-in auto tuner, you can connect another auto tuner if you would like. There's the power connector, the VHF antenna connector, and the UHF antenna connector. Below that, we've got the Data 1 jack, we've got the uh, Data 2 socket here, and we've got a straight key jack right here. There's an ALC input jack for connecting to an external amplifier. There's also the SIN control jack to use a non-ICOM linear with the rig. The accessory socket that allows you to get your TNC, data communications, automatic antenna selection, uh, linear amplifier connections, audio in and out, a host of other options are available right here. But then we've got the CIV remote jack that allows you to connect up with CIV data and a USB connector that really does a lot here. You can put modulation in this, you can get receive audio out, you can remotely control the receiver and the transmitter, uh, change just about everything on it with the remote control software using this USB jack. And then we've also got a couple other jacks here. These are our speaker outputs. One of them gives us a mixed signal from both the main and sub band. And if you use both of them, you can split the main band to one speaker and the sub band to another speaker. Now, if we had installed the optional 1200 megahertz unit, its antenna connector would be right here. Now let's talk about some of the things you can't see, but you can certainly hear on this radio. It's got dual conversion superheterodyne receivers. That means much like the technology in ICOM's higher end transceivers, uh, this rig has a dual conversion superheterodyne system and an image projection mixer. There's a dedicated receiver circuit from the antenna connector to the second image rejection filter for each band, and this improves the in band intermodulation distortion because it just simplifies the electronics that the signal has to go through. There's a 30 dBm class third order intercept point that's also in ICOM's top of the line rigs. It's got IP3 of plus 30 dBm typical in the HF bands and the VHF and UHF bands also have improved IP3 performance. 
Now the rig comes with a 15 kilohertz first IF filter in it already, but you can add additional filters if you want for 3 kilohertz and 6 kilohertz received bandwidth. The 32-bit floating point DSP really shines in this rig. It's there again, much like the higher end ICOM models. It's got a lot of digital processing functions like uh, modulation and demodulation, uh, IF filters, twin pass band tuning, AGC, noise blanker, noise reduction, manual or automatic notch filter, speech compression, and RIDI demodulation and decoder functions. And the AGC loop management function is built in the DSP as well. This allows you to get better received signals with less interference. And there's digital IF filters that allow you to build your own filter. You can choose a bandwidth, shape, and uh, center the frequency so that you can hear that rare DX station. Tommy and I are going to play with a little bit of D-Star on HF. We've never done that before, and we just happen to have two rigs in our shacks right now that have that capability. I'm using the IC7100 here. This one comes with a D-Star option already installed. We're going to connect here on sideband and uh, see how the band conditions are. And then we're going to switch over to DV and uh, talk a little bit of D-Star. Well, we've got an IC9100 over here. I hear a lot of people talking these days about doing D-Star on HF, and I want to give it a try. This radio is certainly capable. It's pretty easy to set up, actually. Um, Normally, we'd be running in sideband mode, lower sideband right here. To go into D-Star or DV mode, just hit the DV button. It does require that the digital board be installed, and I installed it uh, just a little while ago. So we need to put our call sign in like we set up any D-Star radio. To do that, we hit the menu button three times till we get to menu three. It's actually two times till we get to menu three. And we hit the button under CS for call sign. And the same one, we can scroll down through. We're doing the your call, repeater one, repeater two, my call. And hit edit. And then you can basically use these two buttons to go back and forth. You use the knob to turn to find what character you want, find it and move to the right. When you get finished, hit menu to save it. And I already put 9100 on the end as well because I want to transmit what radio I'm on. So anyway, it's basically that simple. And we'll hit menu till we get back out. The only thing I had to do on this rig was go into the menus and go to call sign and set your call sign in there to be CQ and then CQ, CQ, CQ. And I set my call sign to be W5JDX. Now we should be set. All we do is switch between whichever mode we want. I'll start out in sideband here. And we'll contact Tommy there and see how that goes. It's a little bit noisy tonight. You can hear it in there. And then we'll switch back over to DV mode and we'll try some digital HF. Let's give it a try. Now the first thing we're going to do here is pick out a frequency. And I've chosen 3612 here. It's down in the extra portion of the band. Tommy and I are both extras. And you want to sweep back and forth either side and make sure that that frequency is not in use and it's clear either side of it for a little bit. Because you don't want to interfere with someone else who's using analog. We're going to try 20 meters. Uh, we tried 80 meters earlier. That didn't really work out so good for us. Uh, some garble in there. Same thing on 40. Those bands were really noisy. We went up here to 20 meters. It's a little quieter here and we're going to give it a shot here. So we'll start out on the upper side down here, and let's just see if we can even talk to each other on 20 meters this evening. N5ZNO, W5JDX. N5ZNO. How copy? Oh man, you sound good. Want to jump over on DV and give it a try? Yeah, let's jump over there. I'm going to open my uh, RF game back up just so I know that I've got enough signal coming in. And uh, I'll switch on over to D-Star right now. Okay, QSL, doing the same thing. And now it's completely silent. We're in uh, DV mode for D-Star. See, when I hit that DV button, every bit of the noise is gone. N5ZNO, W5JDX. N5ZNO, man, you sound really good over here. Sound like you're on a repeater or close bottom FM simplex or something. Yeah, you sound good here, too. Of course, you sounded good on simplex as well. There was no problems there whatsoever. Uh, yeah, you sound just like you were on the D-Star repeater here. I can't tell a bit of difference. Guess we could try backing the power down some. 
See if it'll work at lower power. Oh, it's half power. Yeah, of course, my watt meter is 50 watts. Okay, same thing here. I've dropped it down to 50 watts. And uh, do you copy me okay like this? Can't tell any difference. Well, that's a pretty good experiment there. I guess uh, I'll catch you maybe back on two meters a little bit later on this evening. All right, we'll catch you later on. Uh, thanks for the D-Star QSO on 20 meters. N5ZNO, W5JDX. All right, 73, N5ZNO. There's other great features to this radio, like the optional CS9100 programming software allows you to easily program the rig, and also the RSBA1 software, which allows for remote operation over the internet or your local network, and not just the control of the rig, it also sends the receive and transmit audio through that USB connector as well, making that very easy to get your remote base up and running. There's a lot of other great features like built-in voice synthesizer that announces the frequency and operating mode, user programmable band edges, uh, the voice squelch control, AFC functions, RS speech compressor, microphone equalization and adjustable transmit bandwidth, two preamps for the HF and 50 MHz band, uh, preamp 1 increases the low signal level, improving intermod characteristics, while preamp 2 blows it out with a high gain preamplifier, and there's a 20 dB built-in attenuator as well, CTCSS and DTCS tone encode and decode, triple band stack register, quick split function and frequency lock, uh, RIT and uh, delta transmit variable, single sideband or CW synchronous tuning automatically shifts your carrier point, when you switch between those modes, uh, there's one hertz pitch tuning and display, programmable scan, memory scan, uh, select scan, mode select scan, and delta frequency scan, and automatic tuning steps, and AH4 control circuit, and automatic repeater functions and one touch repeater functions. You can see why ICOM calls this the all around transceiver. So if you're looking for a radio that does everything, <laughs> This one's got you covered. Uh, there's a few options for it. You can add the D-Star board to it and then get on D-Star, VHF, UHF, or HF. Uh, optional filters you can get for it, but mostly everything's built in and you're ready to go when you get it. Uh, take a few minutes to learn it. And one thing I've been a, sort of impressed about this radio, as you know, I use an IC7700. And the DSP receive functions in here sound so much like the 7700, you know you're listening to an ICOM with it. So check out the ICOM 9100, and I think you may find that you've got a radio there that'll do everything under the sun.